I don't see anything. Okay, it's there. Oh, okay. Hey, I think we're live. All right. Okay. If you guys can see us, please say hello and comment so we know that you can hear us. Um, we're trying something new tonight. We're trying to do a dual live kind of thing. So um, if you can see us, please comment so we know that you can hear us and see us. So um, first of all, we just want to introduce ourselves. I'm Tiffany and I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'm here with Kim. If you want to introduce yourself. I'm Kim. I'm Kim. I'm in um, outside of the Twin Cities in Minnesota. Perfect. Oh, no, I can. Time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, we just wanted to come live to you tonight. We just got off the most amazing, epic Adventures by Disney trip ever. And um, we wanted to come to you and talk to you about it really quick tonight. Um, we could literally go on for hours, for days about how awesome this trip was and all of the ways that Adventures by Disney um, is just, you know, above everyone else as far as it comes to uh, group travel and VIP travel around the world. There's, you know, over 25 different itineraries and we were lucky enough to go to Central Europe, um, to Prague, to Salzburg and to Vienna and just experience this once in a lifetime trip. So. We only get 30 minutes tonight to talk to you about that. And so we're going to talk about a few things. But um, if you would, in the comments, um, just say hello to us and tell us where you're watching from. Um, also, if you have any questions whatsoever, please put those in the comments. And um, even if you're catching this on the replay, if you'll comment replay, and we would love to come back and revisit the comments and say hello to you and answer your questions. Um, and this is just one of many lives that we're going to do. Um, so stay tuned on this page and um, we're going to come to you a few times over the next um, month probably and talk to you about more specific things. But we are just super excited about everything we've experienced and we wanted to at least kind of come to you tonight and talk to you about a few things um, that we were wowed by with Adventures by Disney. So anyway, say hello to us and um, we would love to just have a conversation with you tonight about some of those things. So, all right, Kim. Okay, okay. so you. we wanted to start off talking about um, kind of the three big things that stood out with us with Adventures by Disney. Neither one of us had been on an Adventures by Disney trip before. And in fact, right. Tiffany, this was her first time out of the country, right? Into um, into Europe, yes. This is yeah. my first time to Europe. So yeah, to Europe. Um, this was my second time. I actually went with a high school group. Um, so that was a long, long time ago. Um, and it was, mm -hmm. you know, definitely a group touring experience. And so I have a little bit to compare it with, with you know, traveling with that type of a group tour and maybe mm -hmm. the differences that I noticed with how Adventures by Disney does things. Um, right. one of the biggest things is the accommodations. They are, um, you know, usually four or five star hotels that are in these um, in the cities where you're visiting. You um, are centrally located. So, you know, when you have your free time, you're able to be really close to pop out and go do some other little activities um, like the first day when we were in Prague. Mm -hmm. um, I know Tiffany already went out and went exploring some like shops and cafes. Yeah kind of like scope the, the layout of the land. Um, and then we had some free time in Prague that we were able to um, to walk around. We were, I mean, it, what was it? Like five minutes walking from the Charles Bridge, maybe a little more than five minutes. Which yeah, is we were right in the heart of everything. Super easy to just pop out and 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 do something that you wanted to do. And that's, that's another thing that I think is cool because even though it's, you know, group travel and you're, you know, traveling in this group, you do have those pockets of time to do what you want to do that if it's specific to, you know, something that you wanted to try. Right. And mm -hmm. the hotel room in general, we stayed at the um, Prague Marriott Hotel. That was the mm -hmm. first hotel that we stayed at. Um, and so they, um, the, the rooms were basically what I refer to as American size rooms. If people have stayed in rooms mm -hmm. in Europe before, um, there, most rooms only accommodate two people. Um, they're double rooms. And so you usually can't fit, you know, a big 
you know, party of four, or even sometimes you can request a triple when you're booking rooms in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that also means that they're really tiny rooms, um, especially yeah. when you're in these older, you know, hundreds of year old cities you know, these hotels aren't ginormous, but I do feel like our room accommodations, we had air conditioning, which people mm -hmm. warned me about going, going yeah. um, you know, in August and it was, you know, warm, but the weather was really nice. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, but it was nice to have the air conditioning and our room was really great size and, you know, queen size beds, um, you know, flat screen TV, yep. very updated, you know, nice accommodations, um, normal bathroom, you know, not like a, mm -hmm. you know, weird toilet that you couldn't figure out or things like that. So I, I felt like it yeah. was all of the hotel rooms that we stayed in were very um, comparable to what you would stay in America. You know what I mean? It wasn't, they, they try to keep you comfortable mm -hmm. with what you're used to, you know, traveling back home kind of a thing. Um, yeah, I was definitely wowed by that because I mean, you do hear, you know, when you go over to Europe that these, everything is teeny tiny and only two people can stay in the room. But I was, I mean, not only was it comparable to something here that we're used to, but I was wowed. Like it was still like amazing. Right. So, right. Um, and yeah. you know, all of the hotels were were you know just as incredible in Salzburg, which Salzburg was actually my favorite stop. I don't know if you've had time to kind of assess like yeah. what your favorite like place was. Um, yeah. Salzburg was right in the middle, so we started in Prague. Then we um, took a coach bus. Um, and we'll talk about the bus transportation in a minute um, when we were switching over to Salzburg. So Salzburg is in the mountains on the way to mm -hmm. Vienna. So Salzburg is right on the border of Austria uh, and the Czech Republic. And it was just a really small town. Um, they had, you know, beautiful. We were right by the Mirabel Gardens. So literally on the mm -hmm. other side of our hotel, kind of like the hedge of the back of our hotel was the start of the Mirabelle Gardens, which is where the famous scenes from The Sound of Music were, you know, mm -hmm. filmed. And you could just walk out. And we actually, there was some rain a couple of days. And mm -hmm. the day that we went through the gardens as a group, it was raining. So we didn't get to do a lot of pictures that maybe we would want to take, you know, mm -hmm. of, the, of the gardens. And so we tried the next morning and it was pouring down rain. So yep. activities we didn't get to go there. But we finally, like before we got on the bus uh, to leave Salzburg, we were able to run over to the gardens and take pictures. But it was because it was so close. So right. know, to be able to have those opportunities to go back, even if there was weather and things like that. But yeah, we had multiple opportunities and it was, it was raining multiple times, but yes, I mean, there was four or five times where we tried, we're like, oh, we'll try the next morning and then it rained and we'll try the next afternoon and it rained. But yeah, being so close, it was so nice to have that opportunity to try multiple times. Right. And then yeah. the last hotel we stayed at, we kind of got spoiled with our last hotel. <sighs> yes. Yeah. The Ritz. Because I mean... It's the only best. the best. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it was beautiful. Like we walked into our room and there was like a sitting couch with this mm -hmm. massive like floor to ceiling curtains just surrounding mm -hmm. the couch at the back of the room. And or I guess, yep. you know, the far wall of the room. And then we had like a walk in closet. Mm -hmm. and a huge, you know, it was very tall ceilings. Our bathroom was bigger than my bathroom here at home. You yeah. Know, big soaking tub with the separate walk-in shower and then a whole big, you know, vanity, um, you know, and then all the outlets, you know, had all the like, I think that one actually had, you know, most, probably the most outlets in any of the, you know, hotels that we stayed at, but I didn't have a problem mm -hmm. with being, like, you know, charging and things like that. So right. just in general, the accommodations were very, high end so yes. you know it's you know mm -hmm. adventures by disney is definitely um luxury included mm -hmm. travel and they go to destinations yep. not just in europe so they go to australia and china and the newest itinerary for next summer is egypt um and so mm -hmm. the accommodations i think are some marriott's you know located in cairo and and, and things like that so they definitely are seeking out very nice accommodations to keep you comfortable and enjoy your time. Right. Yeah. Do you want to add anything about the accommodations? I mean, the accommodations were amazing, but also I was um, really impressed with 
what was included with our accommodations and the breakfast and stuff. And I mean, I just kept thinking every time we went to breakfast, like how amazing it was, all the things that were included. And like, when I think of people from there coming to America and staying at our hotels and having our breakfast and how disappointed they must be because the breakfasts were that amazing. Like they were so, there were so many choices and I mean, I think it was they even had a chef with like an omelet station and a waffle yeah. station. They yeah. They don't have that at the included breakfast or at least most of them, you know, around here. But so even just the, the simple things like the yogurt was like, real yogurt in a adorable little glass jar and like the lid was covered in this cute little fabric like just the attention to detail and like you come over here and everything's just so processed and like here's your little dan and yogurt you know but over there i mean it was just so like the attention to detail was so incredible and even just the coffee they served was beautiful i mean just i mean i don't know i yeah. miss it can you tell i want to go back <laughs> I was trying to recreate, I was trying to recreate my breakfast when I got yeah. back the first couple of days and yeah, I ran out of time and energy to be able to do that. It's nice just to walk downstairs and to show up to this really nice breakfast to start your yeah. day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we were gonna it was talk beautiful. About, yeah, we were gonna talk mm -hmm. about the inclusions, um, the accommodations we started talking about, and then mm -hmm. you know, the things that stood out to us we could talk about uh, the most are the inclusions on Adventures by Disney trip. So mm -hmm. uh, Tiffany mentioned the included breakfast, staying at the hotel, mm -hmm. um, some other notes that we have, you know, Adventures by Disney really seeks to cover everything. Like you don't have to think about the tips for the servers at the mm -hmm. restaurants that you eat at or at the hotels, um, our local yeah. guides. So we had two adventure guides, which are included in the cost of the tour. Mm -hmm. Two, I got in two guides. One of them is always going to be a Disney cast member, usually from the U.S., and the other one is going to be um, someone that is from the country that you're touring or from that part of the world. Mm -hmm. So we had Paula, which was our uh, American Disney cast member, and then we had Winston, who is mm -hmm. uh, from Vienna. He made it very mm -hmm. clear how much he loved it <laughs> and that everything in Vienna was the best. Yeah, um, and. So he, I think he's only been to the U S once and that was for some sort of training with Disney. So like he lives over there and knows very much, you know, that part yeah. of the world, um, in yeah. his country. So, um, yeah. those two guides are included with your vacation. And I kind of refer to them as like our mom and dad or like our camp counselor, because they just yeah. took care of everything. You know, yeah. they told us what time to, you know, the luggage was going to get pulled the next morning, what time we had to be at the bus how much, okay, this is your free time this afternoon. They were always like giving us, you know, the rundown of the schedule for the rest of the day and maybe even mm -hmm. the next day so that people could kind of plan out their time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even when we had our free time, I know that Winston was on the phone calling ahead to like our next, you know, tours or our guides or our vendors for the next cities or the next day to set that up and make sure everything was yep. confirmed. And, you know, if there was any special accommodations that needed to be taken care of, that they were taking care of all mm -hmm. of that. So for, you know, type, yeah. three type planner people, you know, to be able to just show up and enjoy your vacation, um, that yeah. was, that's a, a really big difference, I think, with Adventures by Disney, is that? Well, know. yeah. And I would say, too, there were so many things that happened behind the scenes that we didn't even know about. I just happened upon one of them one morning, um, and I snapped a picture really quick because I was going down to breakfast, and it was our last day in I believe it was our last day in Salzburg. We were getting ready to leave. Mm -hmm. And I caught Winston at the breakfast tipping the right. you know, all of the wait staff for us for the last three days that we had been there and making arrangements. And so many things like that happened behind the scenes that we didn't even know was happening and we didn't even have to worry about. And as Kim mentioned, you know, as somebody who is a type A planning type person and who is always in charge of every vacation that we go on. I'm always the tour guide. I'm always the one spurring on the vacation and thinking, you know, okay, what are we doing next? And where are we going? And everybody's looking to me. Um, this is the first vacation. I think I've really just been able to enjoy my vacation. And as a mom and um, you know, the planner and all the things I could, that was a huge value to me. 
um, not having to worry. Like you literally just got on the bus and they took you somewhere. They were They really were. I mean, small things like um, things that you don't think about, like you have to actually, you have to pay to use the restroom in Europe, which sounds crazy. It's something that's to us. And um, if you haven't been to Europe, you wouldn't know. Um, but, you know, we were leaving the, this beautiful cathedral at one point and there was a restroom. And, you know, if you didn't have euros on you, um, or, you know, any kind of coins, you couldn't go, but our adventure guides were standing there with coins, like, do you guys need to go to the bathroom? Okay, here's your coin, you go to the bathroom. Like, I know it sounds silly and simple, but those are the details that you don't even have to worry about and have to think about. And every time we got on the bus, there was a snack. If you were hungry, there were snacks. There was a whole basket full of snacks. Um, to choose from. There was always water available. Um, you didn't have to seek that stuff out. And I know that sounds so simple, but those were honestly the things that stood out. All those little tiny details that added up that you just didn't have to worry. Like everything was thought about. Everything was there and done. And so, you know, one of the things that you don't think about, but the things that you, you know, would think about would be like all of our admission tickets. You know, yeah. we were never standing in line waiting to get tickets. Mm -hmm. That's why having the yeah. two sides, I, you know, either Paula would be with our group. And that's the other thing I was going to say is that in each country, we had someone else, a third tour guide that would either meet us, mm -hmm. you know, and walk around Prague with us. And that was a local, you know, Prague citizen um, mm -hmm. who spoke English and was able to give us a personalized tour of either, you know, with our Czech, um, or I mean with our Prague tour guide, he took us to the Prague castle and then we walked down to the Charles bridge and then we went to see the astronomical clock. And then he met us again later that night for our um, progressive dinner where we went to yeah. see different vendors. Um, and then, you know, he was our local tour guide. So he, mm -hmm. we basically had three tour guides in each of the yeah. countries for different things. And so those, they had tips, you know, to be able to tip for those, you know, that experience as well. And that was all taken care of. Um, and then, like I said, the admission tickets that while our local tour guide, Robert, was talking to us about the Prague Castle, Winston was running off and going and getting our, our admission tickets for the different parts of the castle that we were going to go see. And then mm -hmm. we just, he came back to the group and magically our tickets appeared and passed out to everybody. And then we walked walk into the, the church, um, you know, for, right. for that. Edition. So those tickets are all taken care of. Those are all paid for as part of the, um, you know, fee for the, for the vacation. Those are all planned out. Um, and then I wanted to speak to the types of experiences that we got to do that, you know, once we, got to the end of our time in each city and we had free time, it was really kind of, we did everything. We did all the mm -hmm. highlights in those places. So you could either go back to them or you could, you know, add in something a little smaller. Like for example, some people in our group in Prague went to the John Lennon wall. Um, mm -hmm. That wasn't, you know, part of our tour, but mm -hmm. we were close enough where they could walk to go see that. And so there was yeah. other unique things that, you know, are in those cities that you could add on to your free time, but you really, covered it all. And so there were very unique cultural experiences to the region that you're visiting. Um, and we, like, for example, in wow. Prague, we did the progressive dinner. And so it was really focusing on the cultural food, uh, things that were grown in that country. We did, you know, kind of like a wine tasting and he was telling us about the different um, vineyards and how they're trying to bring wine making back to the Czech Republic and that there was all these Czech wines that had mm -hmm. one of the boards um, once they were able to kind of take control over their farms and their economy again, post-communism. So just learning stuff about, you know, that part of the world that I felt like mm -hmm. I really understood that culture and what it's like to live there. Um, mm -hmm. And when I, you know, I, I know we've talked about this before that this probably isn't an adventure that we would have picked for ourselves as our first tour, you know, right. people pick London and Paris and, yep. and Madrid or things like that. And I kind of keep as I'm processing, you know, just coming back in the first thing that people ask me about the trip is, I'll say, you know, I really liked focusing on one region mm -hmm. and really to know those cities and spending time. Um, my last trip when I went when I was in high school, we went to Barcelona, Paris, and then London. And so that's really and we were there for a week. And that's really like going to New York, 
Chicago and San mm-hmm. Francisco in the U.S. Yeah. all in one week. And there's such big cities that you really can't like do everything there. And so yep. you, find, you get like a taste and then you're like, OK, if I come back, I'll do this and spend more time mm-hmm. but I with these itineraries, the way that Adventures by Disney has them you know, already set up. There's actually a person in charge of creating very unique itineraries all over the world that will hit these yeah. cultural experiences, you know, that do food and um, history and touring the landmark, like icons that you want to mm-hmm. go visit places. And they're just very well thought out and very put together. And so, yeah. you know, going to Salzburg, uh, I said that was my favorite city. I liked that yeah. because there was all the sound of music stuff in Salzburg. Um, and so, mm-hmm. The, the next thing that I wanted to move on talking about was the wow kind of factor, the things that like the Disney difference, mm-hmm. you know, we've kind of already talked about some of that along the way. Um, mm-hmm. But when we were in Salzburg, we got to go inside the gazebo where they filmed the um, scene from Sound of Music and nobody else gets to go in there. That's only a Disney exclusive tour that yeah. is able to get the key to go into that. So that's a very VIP exclusive experience um, that only, you know, Adventures by Disney has access to. Um, that was such a wow moment. I mean, there were so many wow moments, but, um, you know, people have asked me since I got back, like, what was your favorite thing? What was your favorite place? What was your favorite thing that happened? And there were so many moments like that one that um, literally brought me to tears. Like, it was so overwhelming that we were getting you did cry experience. I did. I cried a lot. I'm a crier. But seriously, it was just so overwhelming to me in the moment that we were getting to experience this. Um, it was just the realization that this is such a once in a lifetime opportunity. And we were literally the only ones allowed to go in that gazebo. And there were multiple people there. like touring and looking at this gazebo and they had to literally stand guard of the door and i mean they were very nice about it but they were like this is an adventures by disney exclusive this is a private thing you know only adventures by disney is allowed in here and i mean you talk about feeling like a vip i mean everybody was just on the edge of their seat trying to get in that gazebo i mean it's locked they keep it locked for everyone else everyone gets to take pictures outside of the gazebo which is awesome enough as it is mm-hmm. not only did we get to go inside but they played the music like they thought of everything they had the music playing for us they played 16 going on 17 from the movie it was so emotional for me like it was you know and that was just one moment and those moments happened over all nine days of the adventure. I mean, we could literally t- just talk to you 30 minutes about that one day, that right, one day. Right. Well, so what we about the photography that adventure guides are actually kind of like your personalized photographers for your family. Yeah. Um, and so our group was actually a group of travel agents. So um, mm-hmm. we had some kids and we had some spouses and other family members. But um, mm-hmm. it wasn't necessarily like the typical Adventures by Disney group where it would be families, you know, traveling. Together. Right. But the adventure guys actually act as your family, you know, videographer, photographer mm-hmm. um, for all of your trip. And they give yeah. you a link, almost like photo pass at the parks. They give you a little link at the end of your trip where you can go access those pictures. They actually put a slideshow together for us of some of their favorites that we watched all mm-hmm. together last night. And that's, you know, they were taking awesome pictures and, and I actually took a picture. I posted it on my Facebook page of Paula laying down on the ground, trying to get the best angle of the groups of people <laughs> in front of the Prague Castle, like with the <laughs> behind them. Um, and it was just yeah. awesome because um, they know they've been to these places before. They've actually taken mm-hmm. these they before they know where's right. the right spot to make you stand and you know get like the best like shot and quickly and not take like oh because when you neither of us had ever been there before we might have missed an angle or a perspective of a picture that you know right might have turned out as well if we had done it on our own um and then mm-hmm. you know as a mom I don't get very good pictures of my kids because they hate that I'm taking pictures of them. So I think having an outside <laughs> tour, you know, with our adventure guides being the people taking the picture that I feel like 
you would get more genuine mm -hmm. photos um, because my kids will smile for other people, but not for me because they're like, mom, so they my picture. Um, and so I yeah. think that is a wow factor to me um, with what the adventure guides bring to the experience by documenting that you yeah. could put your camera away and just enjoy the moment. And they're going to mm -hmm. take those action shots and group shots and pictures of your family and people, you know, doing different things. Like they're not there with their family. You know, that's the whole point of them is to add to your vacation and to be able to, to just make it a really great experience. So it's, it's yeah. kind of the guides that make the whole, whole trip and the, and the idea behind it, I think is very unique to Disney. I mean, we had a tour guide, that was with us the whole time in each of our cities when I was in high school and mm -hmm. he would smoke a cigarette while he waited by the bus and told us like, <laughs> you got an hour, come back, you know? Um, yeah. It was not the same experience. It was very personalized. Um, and it's a different mentality for sure. I mean, they definitely take ownership of their group and, you know, they do feel like they are, our family during that time. And I mean, it was sad when we left, like they were there, they were there at the beginning. They were there to, you know, greet us when we got there, but they were, they also got up and yeah. whenever anybody had to leave and go to the airport, they were up at, you know, four o'clock in the morning, that they were there up. and saw us off like mm -hmm. every single person. And of course we were all leaving at different times, but they were there at the, all the way to the bitter end, you know, giving hugs and, you know, all the way to the end, but, um, but you're right. Like they just, they add a whole other element to the trip that you didn't know that you needed or that you even cared about until you were there. And I mean, they were there at so many moments, like, you know, when we were hiking up the mountain in the Alps and Paula was there playing eye of the tiger <laughs> to encourage everybody to get to the top of the mountain. And you like, you didn't need it, but it, it added to, you know, the experience yeah. and it was incredible. And you're like, of course, this is, this is amazing. Of course you're playing Eye of the Tiger. This is, this is perfect. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, just the fact that they have been on this adventure multiple times, they know, like you said, they know the perfect angle. They know the perfect camera shot. They're like, you need to stand right here. I'm going to stand up here and get this perfect angle. I mean, just, you just don't even think about it. You don't know that you need them until right. you experience it. Right. And and it's and just a whole other level. Disney has the highest return rate of any of these tour mm -hmm. groups. I think it's like yeah. 85% or something like super high. Yeah. For once you've been on Adventures by Disney vacation. Right that you want to go on more. And I would say that's the, you know, that's how I want to, to go see other parts of the world that I haven't seen yet. But yeah. I want that experience again, because it's, it's so yeah. worth, it's so worth, the, there's so much value that you get in that price point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've kind of hit like our, you know, topics that we want to cover for tonight. Like there's so many other like deep things we could talk about each city. We could talk about um, <laughs> food and, the other experiences and mm -hmm. well, I think for now it's we've been on for 30 minutes I don't know if anybody's asking any questions or anything I think Tiffany can see like I see a lot of hellos um no specific questions for this time but again if you're watching this on the replay please please don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments because we will come back and, and answer your questions and we would love to come live to you a few more times and talk more specifically about different aspects of the trip because as Kim said we could we could really branch off and just I could talk to you for 30 minutes on snacks like the snacks were amazing all the food like, I definitely had five the food. Pounds. I weighed myself yeah. when I, I gained five pounds so there was a that's, lot of good food awesome. we did not go hungry so okay Melinda Melinda did say what was your favorite part and that's that's so hard to answer um I, I don't know. You know, the part that um, I will say the part that surprised me the most is how close I became to all the people on the trip. Yeah, um, there were there were 38 of us on the trip. And so you think that's a huge group. Like, how does that even work? Like, what if you don't even like the people you're traveling with? You know, I want to just travel with my family. You know, I don't get how you can travel with such a huge group. Um, I will say by the end, we got to know everybody somehow. I don't, I can't explain it. Um, there were definitely smaller groups that kind of formed throughout the week. People that you, you know, had similar 
you know, personalities, our interests. Um, and those smaller groups that we formed, um, you know, we ate together every day. Maybe we spent our free time together um, every day. And we really bonded. There's something about traveling the world with somebody that really brings you together. Um, so I was surprised at how um, how close I was able to get to these people in such a short time um, and how like I'm looking forward to our next trip together and um, which we don't have. One we, don't have one we don't have one planned yet, but we will. But I do know that there are people <laughs> no. that go on multiple adventures by Disney vacations mm -hmm. and then they start coordinating with other families and trying yeah. to go on the same adventures because they really enjoyed, you know, meeting, yeah. you know, them. And then there's always new people. So you kind of have that aspect of it. And I do mm -hmm. feel like for someone who is like an introvert, that maybe that overwhelms mm -hmm. them a little bit, um, that there definitely is time on your own you know, that yeah. you don't have to do stuff with the group. Um, and you don't have to participate in any of the activities either. Like it's not required. Mm -hmm. They're not going to make you, we definitely, we had an older gentleman in our group that wasn't able to do some of the activities. Carl. Yeah. And, um, Carl was 88. <laughs> yeah. And so they just made sure that he had something that he wanted to do and could, you know, and they accommodated him where they could. Um, mm -hmm. like for example, they, um, would, they drove him when we were all walked over to the Lipizzan, um, riding school or the, the Spanish mm -hmm. riding school for the Lipizzan horses in Vienna. Um, we all walked there because we were so centrally located with our hotel. Um, and Paula, one of the adventure guides rode with Carl in a taxi over to mm -hmm. the so that he didn't have to walk there. So they will accommodate where needed for, you know, different needs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So really it's very personalized and trying to make sure to involve everybody in the group. But I think that did surprise me because I really mm -hmm. only expected to hang out with you because right. we were going in. Um, but we did meet people from all over the country, other travel yep. agents. And you know, it was definitely like a networking trip to be able to, you know, meet people and how they run their business or what it is that they, what their clients, you know, what are they booking for their clients and things like that mm -hmm. and to different parts of the world. And how did that compare? Cause a lot of people, this was their first adventures by Disney trip, but mm -hmm. it was the first time coming to Europe. And so to be able to compare those experiences and, um, and be able to, to speak to that, you know, for clients that we're happy to share with people. So, yeah. So Melinda said, wow, 88. And I'm like, you know, the first time we met Carl, so the first night that we got together, we we had a dinner to, you know, kind of introduce ourselves to each other. And of course, there's 38 of us. So, you know, I remember all the things that everybody said. Yeah. So they had us all together and they're like, everybody stand up, introduce yourself and what you're most excited about for this trip. And of course, you know, people are standing up, you know, telling where they're from. I'm most excited about, you know, the Sound of Music tour or I'm most excited about the Ice Cave and all this. So Carl stands up. <laughs> Carl's like, I'm 88 and I'm just excited to be here. And I mean, I think it just erupted into applause because he was just the cutest thing in the world. But yeah, I mean, so there were definitely certain things that he couldn't do, but they really accommodated him and um, made sure that he did as much as he wanted to do. I mean, when we went to we went to the salt mines and we had to slide down these slides to go deeper into the mine. Homeboy was sliding down with the rest of us. I mean, he, he did as much as he possibly could. And then the things that he couldn't do, they made sure that he could get to the next thing. Right. You know, like Kim said, like they would bust him instead of him having to walk or whatever it is. They accommodate everyone. And again, we could go on about accommodations. We did have um, one person our, on our adventure that was um, gluten-free and lactose intolerant. And so, you know, all the times that they provided snacks, um, they had something special for her. Um, and honestly, there were many times where I was like a little jealous of her snack because it looked amazing. Like they would bring her this beautiful, like fresh fruit cup, you know, when we were having um, something sweet or totally gluten filled, you know, they made sure that she had something that worked for her. And so I, it, the details, again, we could go on forever. Um, and you know, we will come back at another time and talk specifically about certain things. And please let us know in the comments if there's something specific. Um, somebody wants to know, did anyone celebrate their birthday during the trip? I don't think we had a birthday 
um, celebration during this trip. It wasn't well. There were some people in our group that it was birthdays like post traveling, but we didn't celebrate mm -hmm. anything like like you do in the parks kind of a thing where people are recognized or that sort of a thing. They do recognize. Although I will say Paula, Paula, our guide, it was her birthday month and yeah. she was turning 30 this birthday month and it was actually pretty fun. We, um, Every day, starting August 1st, she did something specific in each place that we stopped that, to celebrate her her birthday. So, you know, we did celebrate her birthday, but um, I'm sure they would do something fabulous if you were celebrating a birthday. I didn't even think about it. My birthday was yesterday. I totally should have celebrated my birthday while we were there. <laughs> like, a good what are you celebrating? Well, my birthday is in like two weeks, but I'm going to celebrate right. it now. They would have done it. Yeah. You know, it would have been great. There was no birthday celebrations. Yeah. Not this time. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, if there's. We'll wrap it up and then yeah. we'll come back to you another time. Um, in this group, mm -hmm. you know, feel free, you know, to um, go to each one of our pages. Like Tiffany mm -hmm. and I kind of posted different pictures, but we summarized, you know, each of our days on the adventure. So you can go back and look at some of our posts and some photo mm -hmm. albums and we're continuing to post um, yep. more. It's just so much to kind of like, you know, still process and you know keep sharing yeah. the things that I'm remembering or things that I want to share with other people. Mm -hmm. um, so we will put our Facebook pages linked in the comments here. So if you mm -hmm. guys want to check out more information and go back and see some of the posts from our trip while we were there. Um, yep. like we said we haven't covered all of it yet, but we will. We, we're happy to cover <laughs> more information. There's so much. Yeah. It's hard to it's hard to focus in on all the little details because every day was so epic. You know, it's hard to I mean, every day got better and better and better. So it's if, if we had done just one day, the things that we did, it would have been still epic. So, yeah, we're, we're still unpacking all of that stuff. And, you know, again, if you think of anything specific you'd like to know more about, please tell us in the comments and we'll come back. We'll circle back around and do another live for you. Um, if it's not next Monday, it'll be the following Monday. Um, and we'll try to do this pretty regularly to, you know, answer any questions that you may have. All right. Thanks, all right. everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.